Okay, now let's see、uh, the previous i how the previous idea can be applied to more general cases. Okay, let's start. Um, suppose I have a maximum function somewhere in my form formulation, and if luckily that it is at the smaller side of an inequality, like this, then we may replace. This maximum function by two linear inequalities, okay, just like what we did in the previous video. Actually, all these things can be variables, parameters, or a function of them.、Uh, for example, here, suppose y plus x one plus three is greater than or equal to the maximum of x one minus x three and two x two plus four. In this case, you can split. This maximum function to two linear、uh, inequalities. Okay, and conceptually, you know why this is true.、Um, suppose this guy is greater than or equal to the maximum of them, then it will be greater than or equal to either one. Or if it is greater than or equal to either one, it would be greater than or equal to the maximum of them. Also, there is no problem of that. In general, there can be more than two terms in the maximum function. Okay, for example, here, suppose you have x one, x two, blah blah blah, up to x n, and your y is required to be ma greater than or equal to the maximum of x one, x two, blah blah, up to x n. In that case, you may replace this maximum function by these n inequalities. Okay. This can still be linearized. Similarly, if you have a minimum function at the larger side, then you can also linearize it. Like the example here, if this is less than or equal to the minimum of these three terms, then it would be less than or equal to each of them. Or the opposite is also true. Okay, so we can still have functions. Of variables and uh, uh, parameters as each term. However, the above technique does not apply to a maximum function at the larger side, or the minimum function at the smaller side, or equalities. Okay, as an example, suppose I have a function like a constraint like this. If I say Y must be no greater than the maximum of x one and x two. That means y should be less than or equal to x one, or y should be less than or equal to x two. Okay, x one and x two. One of them is the larger one. Then my y should be less than or equal to the larger one of them. That means y should be less than or equal to. Either x one or x two, okay, or which means union, okay. The union of linear constraints is not linear, okay. Ah,、uh, linear programming only allows us to deal with and instead of or. So at this moment, there is no way for us to linearize this constraint, okay. In the in in a few weeks, we will tell you how to do this, but. If you only want to use linear programs, then you don't have a way. You don't have a general way to deal with a maximum function at the larger side. For minimum function at the smaller side is the same thing. Finally, for equality is of course again the same thing. So you don't have a way to linearize them in general. Okay. Sometimes we may have the maximum or minimum function at the objective value. Okay, again, just like、uh, our previous or the example of fair allocation in the previous video. Okay, there was an absolute function at the objective function. If we are minimizing a maximum function like this, then according to our discussion, we know this can be. Linearized into this linear program. Okay, I first replace this guy by 
W. At the beginning, I say, okay, I have a constraint. W is equal to the maximum of x1 and x2. And then I realize that this can be an inequality. Okay? Because we are minimizing W, so W would be as small as possible, eventually making this an equality. And then this is just a constraint with the maximum function at the smaller side. So that's why I can linearize it by two equality inequalities. Again, x1 and x2 here can be variables, functions, or of, uh, sorry, variables, parameters, or a function of them. There may be other constraints for this linear program, okay? But it doesn't matter. All you want to do is to replace this guy by them. And the objective function may contain other terms, okay? But you can separately deal with this maximum function without affecting other terms. Similarly, when we are maximizing a minimum function, then we can do a similar thing. Here is an example. Suppose I want to maximize the minimum of x1, x2, and the 2, x3, plus 5. And I have another term called plus x4, subject to a single constraint here. Then I don't need to worry about that constraint. I don't need to worry about x4. I can just look at this minimum function and replace it by one variable w and the w must be less than or equal to each of the three terms following the same logic so if I am maximizing a minimum function or if I am minimizing a maximum function I can solve that problem one additional thing is that if I am maximizing a negative maximum function then of course I can do the same thing. Okay, if I am maximizing the negative of a maximum function, I can do the same thing because the negative maximum function is nothing but a minimum function. Okay, uh, you may want to think about it. Again, uh, the direction must be correct. You cannot linearize what we just get for maximizing a maximum function or minimizing a minimum function okay the technique does not apply because in that case once you replace that maximum function with an equality constraint you cannot replace it into an inequality constraint that you need okay for example suppose you are maximizing a maximum of two variables what you would do is to replace it by w and your w would be equal to the maximum of both of them uh, yeah both of them right and then here because you are maximizing w so this equality constraint is equivalent to less than or equal to then your maximum function would be at the larger side of an inequality. Then you cannot linearize it. Okay? So please understand why this and that cannot be done in the same way. Finally, uh, an absolute value function is just a maximum function. Okay? So if you are minimizing an absolute value function, you can linearize it. Or if the absolute value function is at the smaller side of an inequality, it can also be linearized. Okay, so that's the end of this week's video. Uh, you are introduced uh, to specific applications, but those applications are not the, mo the most important thing because there are too many problems that can be formulated into linear programs. Okay, it's impossible to memorize all the formulation, all the ways of formulation. What's really important in this video is that you know you need to linearize nonlinear constraints into linear constraints. Okay, when you have a division of variables, 
you may move the denominator to one side. Or when you have maximum and minimum functions in your objective function or constraints, you know under some conditions there is a very simple way to linearize everything into maybe some more variables than the constraints. Okay? Keep that uh, technique in mind because it will be very useful. During the lecture, prob lecture time, we will give you some exercises to, to apply this technique. Okay? Hopefully, then you will learn more. Thank you.